Hey guys, Jay here, and in this video, I'll show you how to build a completely capable PC for under $150. Or, if you're a Filipino like me, that's 6,000 pesos. So, the things we'll be needing are... 1. A Raspberry Pi Model B. 2. A USB keyboard and USB mouse. 3. An SD card with 4 gigabytes or more. 4. An HDMI or DVI monitor. 5. A micro USB power adapter. 6. An HDMI cable. An Ethernet cable. And a friend's PC with an SD card reader. Oh, what's up, home? Hey, I got my Mac, yo. Optional. A USB hub. That's it. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to buy a Raspberry Pi Model B. It's this little guy right here, and it will come in this little box. So, what is the Raspberry Pi? Basically, it's a credit card size computer that can do everything that a normal basic computer can do. For now, the Raspberry Pi is only available online through either RS Components or Element 14. The B model will cost you $35 and you'll also probably want to get some additional accessories, which you can buy from the store. Once you get a Raspberry Pi, you want to get a monitor. So make sure it's an HDMI or DVI monitor. For myself, I bought a Samsung Series 3 LED HD TV. The Raspberry Pi will work with HDMI or DVI-based monitors. A DVI-based LCD monitor would probably save you the most money, as this runs from as low as $90. Of course, if you're gonna buy in bulk, say, for educational purposes, you'd get them for much cheaper. Of course, you want to buy a connector from the Raspberry Pi to your monitor. So if your monitor is an HDMI monitor, you're gonna need to buy an HDMI to HDMI cable. If it's DVI, you're gonna need to buy an HDMI to DVI cable. Cables run from about $5 to $10. You can find this at your local electronics stores or online. To power your computer, you're gonna need a charger, a 5-watt micro USB based charger. For storage, you're gonna need to buy an SD card with 4 gigabytes or more. So we will use up 1 gigabyte of that SD card to write the OS that we will be using. And the other space we'll be using for applications and programs. If you now have an empty SD card and all the above, then we're all set. Now, the steps shown here will come from an Engadget article which I've linked below. You should give it a good read alongside this video. The first thing we need to do is to write the Raspbian OS onto the SD card. So here's where you'll need a PC with an SD card reader. Use it to download the .zip file from raspberrypi.org slash downloads. It will be about half a gigabyte in size. We can't simply drag and drop the image file to your SD's location though. We'll need to use the DD tool found in Terminal for Mac and Linux users and an app called Win32 Disk Imager for Windows users. Carefully read through the procedure outlined in the Engadget article and you should be able to finish writing the OS file onto the SD card in no time. After that, it's assembly time. Connect the SD card to the SD card slot, keyboard and mouse to the USB slots, the monitor to the HDMI port, the AC adapter from an outlet to the micro USB port, and the Ethernet cable from your modem to the Ethernet port in the Pi. It should turn itself on automatically. Phew! You should boot up to a screen like this. This is the initial configuration screen where you'll get to set the settings that your system will run with. For now, you'll just want to expand the root partition to fill the SD card, change your password, and reconfigure your keyboard, language, and time settings. If you ever need to revisit these tool options again, just run the raspi-config command in terminal. After your configuration, you can now log in with Pi as the username and the password that you set as the password. You'll also need to type Start X to boot up into the graphical user interface that you see on screen.
and that's it. You can now start enjoying your Raspberry Pi enabled computer. In many ways, it resembles the Windows environment that we're all familiar with. To make it more functional, we could start downloading Office programs like OpenOffice, or download VLC for music and movies, or just browse your Facebook feed. You will do all of this through the Midori web browser, which comes pre-installed. The Raspberry Pi is packaged with existing support for the Python programming language. Other languages are supported as well, and expect more in future releases. There are also a lot of games made by the large community of developers. You could actually even create your own games using a tool called Scratch, which you see on your upper left side of the screen. So that's how you build a cheap PC using the Raspberry Pi.